Amen. Glory to God. Give him a round of applause. Amen. Give him a round of applause to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who gave his life for you. Amen. Give him a round of applause. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to start with an initial prayer. Uh, I would like to invite my uh, sister lady to come do this. Amen. Hallelujah. How many praise the Lord tonight? How many praise the Lord tonight? Who's here tonight? I want to see hands. Who's here tonight? Who's here to praise the Lord? Who's here to praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you tonight. You have chosen the best part. You have chosen the best part. You are in a great place. Amen. Do you believe it? You are in a great place. Why? Because God wants to talk to us tonight. Okay, only one and two people believe that. God wants to talk to us tonight. Amen? Amen. And we want to pray together, and we want to ask him to move in this place. Amen? Do you want that to happen? Do you want that to happen? Okay, so let's pray together. Oh, Jesus, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight, Jesus. We are so grateful that you are here, Lord Jesus Christ. You are faithful, you are great, you are an awesome God, and you are here tonight, Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for that, Jesus, Lord. Thank you because you are here. You are the first person that came here tonight. Oh, me, my God, my Lord, my Jesus. Oh, we want to exalt your name. We want to put your name on high. Oh, Lord, we, we want to listen to you tonight. We want you to receive this as a love offering from us from our hearts we want to give you our minds tonight 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 is the day tonight is the time to give you all my heart to give you all my life thank you lord for the health that you provide to us thank you because we are here thank you because you want to talk to us jesus thank you thank you thank you tonight thank you tonight please use the preacher tonight please use the the singers tonight the worship team please use brother david to guide this service use every person tonight that's going to participate in this service jesus to your glory for your glory for your glory oh lord move in this place move in this place we want you to move tonight among us oh lord jesus we want to exalt your name glorify your name differently oh lord differently because you want to move here tonight oh lord jesus we thank you so much because you are here we thank you so much jesus my lord the one who saved us the one who rescued us to you be the glory to you be the glory to you to you all the honor tonight the only one who loved us the only one the only one to you jesus to you to you be the glory tonight in the name of jesus amen hallelujah 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 how many of you believe that he is here tonight amen how many of you believe that his presence is here tonight the bible says where there's more than two or three reunited the the, the spirit of the lord is among us hallelujah amen. now we're going to go with the lecture of the bible amen we're going to go to luke 15, 1 and 2. When you have it, you can uh, say amen. Luke 15, 1 and 2. It's just a short, short, uh, just two verses. And we're all going to say the, uh, everyone together. We're all going to say the, the both verses together and I want you to pay close attention it might be short but it's very 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 powerful amen it's very powerful all right we're all gonna start everybody together all the tax collectors and the sinners were approaching to listen to him and the Pharisees and the scribes were complaining this man welcomes sinners and eats with them 
I didn't hear everybody. Say it again. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Say it again. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. One more time. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. All right, you can sit down now. Amen. If you understand this, you understand that that the person, that, that the people who are saying this are Pharisees and scribes. At the time, Pharisees and scribes were the top of the class, of the Jewish class. They thought they were perfect. They thought they were perfect uh, until, the, until God's eyes. They thought everybody else lower than them were sinners. So when you see this, they say they were complaining. They were telling God this comment wasn't something positive towards him. It was something negative about him. Saying, why are you hanging out with these people? They're sinners. You're disgusting. Why are you hanging out with these kind of people? Why are you eating with them? Why are you welcoming with them? Well, God said, I don't care. I don't care about their past. I don't care about their sin that they've done in the past. I still welcome them. I still eat with you, visitor. I, I tell you right now, it doesn't matter about your past. It doesn't matter about your stuff you did in the past. God says he welcomes you tonight and he eats with you. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know how many believe it tonight. Amen. He says the man who welcomes sinners. Sometimes you feel alone. Sometimes you feel that you don't, you're not appreciated. Sometimes no one welcomes you. Sometimes you don't eat with nobody. Sometimes everybody left you. Well, let me tell you something. There's a God in this place. He will never leave you. He will never abandon you in this moment. Hallelujah. He welcomes you. That door is never closed. The salvation is for everybody. It's for drug addicts. It's for the drug alcoholics. It's for the alcoholics. It's for everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God doesn't do acceptance of people. He doesn't do favoritism of people. Hallelujah. Because the salvation is for everybody. Oh, uh, Psalms 27.10 says, Even if my father, even if my mother abandoned me, with everything the Lord takes care of me, with everything the Lord is still there. Hallelujah. With everything the Lord is still with me. Even if my children leave, even if my wife leaves me, even if everybody leaves me, the Lord is still there. Hallelujah. There's still someone who cares about your life. There's still someone who cares about your soul and wants you to be free. Hallelujah. Because I I tell you right now, if you give your life to Jesus everything will be transformed hallelujah everything will be transformed oh if I was in the earth if I was in the hallelujah if I was in the world right now I wouldn't look like this I would be someone in gangs or someone anywhere else hallelujah but let me tell you something tonight God has transformed lives tonight and today whoever is imprisoned whoever is 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 prisoned oh God will be the key to your luck the solution to your to your problem hallelujah glory to God how many of you believe it tonight how many of you believe it Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel that he is here. I feel that he is here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to do the prayer for the youth. Now I'd like to invite Sister Sarai Vijar to come do this prayer. Hallelujah. Maybe be on our feet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, Lord, thanking you for your mercy, Jesus, because what would be without, what would be of us without you, Jesus? We come before you, Lord, putting those people that are out there, Jesus, seeking for com- comfort and worldly pleasures, Lord, and drug and alcohol, Lord, that you put bravery in our hearts, Lord, so that they know that there is nothing without you, Lord. I present you the youth of JPM, Lord. May you be blessing them every day more, Jesus. May we be useful vassals in your hand, Lord, and may you be strengthening our weaknesses, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, how many of you today can say that God hasn't done something for them? No one. God has done something for everybody here in this place. So it's time to thank Him, right? It's time to give Him all our praise. It's time to rejoice in His name. Hallelujah. We're going to pass it to Brother Anthony for the...
Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. If that's for God, it should be harder. Amen. If that's for God, it should be harder. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You can be seated. It says in 2nd of Corinthians 6-2, if you want to search it, 2nd of Corinthians 6-2, it says, For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. Look now, it's the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. Amen? Now is the day of salvation. Look now, it is the acceptable time. Look now, it is the day of salvation. The day of salvation is not tomorrow. The day of salvation is not two weeks from now. The day of salvation, no, it's now in this instant. Hallelujah. It's now in this instant. Your suffering is going to leave now. Amen. Oh, glory to God. How many of you believe it tonight? Glory. It says, look now, it is the acceptable time. It is the right time to give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. And once you give your life to him, everything else will be transformed. All your sufferings will go away. Everything that you have on yourself will just go away. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many of you believe it tonight? Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, we're going to pray. We're going to actually collect the offerings. I would like to uh, invite Sister Caroline and Sister Lisne to come up here for the offerings. Amen. May we please stand? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Jesus, I thank you because you have brought us here in this hour, because we are here glorifying your name, because we're in this service and you have given us an opportunity to do this for you, my Jesus. I put in front of you in your presence the people who are here, the offerings that are about to be given to you, my Jesus. I ask of you, Jesus, that you be opening the skies and you be blessing all of the lives that are here, my Jesus. Oh, that there will be... <laughs> that... Oh, my God. <laughs> that there will be... <laughs> Um, blessings from the sky, my Jesus. Señor Jesús, te doy gracias, Señor, que tú, que tú bendices al dador alegre, Señor Jesús. Oh, Señor, yo te pido, Señor, que demos con alegría, Señor, te doy gracias, Señor. Yo te pido, Señor, que tú des un mensaje en cada una de las vidas que están aquí, Señor, que tú estés poniendo tu palabra en sus corazones, Señor Jesús. Gracias, Señor. You may pass to give your offerings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, while that's being collected, I have another verse for you. In John 6, 68, says, Simon Peter answered, Lord, who will we go to? If you, will, if you have the words of eternal life, where else would we go if only Jesus Christ is the salvation? Where else would we go if the solution to our problems is Jesus Christ? Amen? Glory to God. Well, uh, I think it's time now that we should go to the best part. You know, we gave everything to God. We gave all of our offerings to God. We gave all our praise to God. Now it's time for God to give us back. Amen? Now I want to invite Sister Cynthia. She's going to give the preaching of tonight. Jonathan, sorry. Jonathan is going to be the preacher of tonight. God bless everybody. Um, before we start, can you guys please stand? We're going to pray for so God could use me and so he can move in the service. Amen? All right, so let's pray. Oh, Jesus Christ, you put in your presence this service right now, my Lord. Oh, we ask you in this day to help me, Jesus Christ, to put your words, to put your Holy Spirit inside me so I can speak your word, Jesus Christ. 
Oh, all I want to speak is about you, my Lord. All I want to speak, everything I say has to be from you, my Lord Jesus Christ. Help me speak the truth, Jesus Christ. Help that young man, the young woman, Jesus Christ, here today to accept you, to open his heart and, and listen to your word, my Lord. Oh, Jesus Christ, let these words that are coming from you touch his heart, touch the heart of the youth today, Jesus Christ. We're here in this service today to give worship to you. Oh, to learn more about you, Jesus Christ, and to be closer to you, my Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus Christ, and we hope you move in this service, and we hope you're here with us, my Lord. We thank you in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so God bless, brothers. You guys can sit down. Um, and now you guys can stand up. I'm sorry. Um, if you guys could open your Bibles in um, uh, Jeremiah uh, 2911. <clears throat> you guys have, you guys can say amen. So it says, uh, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. You guys can sit down now. So, just how God has a plan, everything else has a plan. Am I right? Perhaps your plan right now is maybe after the service, you know, just go home, have a nice dinner, and just kick back and just relax and take a nap or sleep. Just like that, God also has a plan for us. Amen? Also, God... Just like how God has a plan, there's also plans like maybe a sports team. The sports team usually has a plan to, I don't know, become champions in a sport, become uh, first place in a sport, whether it's soccer, whether it's baseball, whether it's basketball. All these teams, their goals are and their plans are to become champions or first place in their thing. Just like this, they also need a scout, a scout, someone to look for the best players in their team. They go around different countries, different places to look out for the best players, best players to help their team succeed in their, in their goal, which is to become first place and to win the championship. Just like this, God has a team as well. He chooses the best people to join his team, which is his children, which is you, 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 you. God has, amen, can I get a hallelujah? I mean, come on, guys. This is, this is not any other service. I mean, God is here. I mean, this is not just the third service in English. This is God's service. Come on. Praise your hand. Lift your hands up and thank God. Amen? This is not just any service. Amen? Just like, just like they have a team, God also has a team. God has you for a reason here. Do you think, think back three years ago or a couple of years ago, how many youth was in this, in this church? You know how God has used each and every one of you guys? This church has grown immensely. From, let's say, like two years ago, there was about, like, what, 20 youth in this church? But God has, has helped us. God has, has, we have prayed. We have, you know, we have ran over here for many times, many times, praising God to, to help this truth, to, to bring more youth to this church. And look where we, we're at right now. We have about, like, 80 youth, 20, 20 youth in each group. That's, that's great. That's, that's, that's a lot in, in, in a church like this, especially in Manhattan. Amen? It's a lot. Just like this, I want, to, I want to tell you guys, just how God, your, God has brought you here today, I want to tell you, God hasn't br brought you here just for any reason. I want to tell you guys, God has brought you here because there's something special for you, amen? If you guys open your Bibles in James 1.18, it reads, you guys have, you guys can say amen. It says, um, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind, first root, all of First fruits of all he created. Meaning, God created us. God knew we were going to be here from the beginning. God created us not just to be anyone. God created us to be fruit. Not just any type of fruit. He, he created us to be something grand. Something big in this world. Amen? Not just to be sitting down here. Of course we're sitting here, but God also wants us to be out there preaching the word of God. Amen? God wants, us, wants young women to be musicians preachers, missionaries out there praising the Lord and praising the Lord. Amen? Amen? And think about how special we are. God dying in the cross for you and me. Think about that. God sacrificing his life for you and me. Just think about that. God going through all that for all our sins. Can you imagine that? God dying for you and me. Perhaps you've done terrible things. You've gone through the worst things in your life. 
but God has still been there and he gave it all for you and me. That's really special. I mean, I don't know anybody that would do that, would give it all for another person. I mean, God must really, really love us to do something like that. That must mean we're really special in front of his presence. Amen? Amen. That must mean we're, we have, he has something grand for us. I mean, for him to give all his life for us and for you and me, he's not just going to give it away for no reason. He's going to give it away because he knows you're going to do something great in his presence. Amen? He's not just going to give it away just because. Just because. Amen? He's going to give it away because he knows he has something special for each and every one of you. Amen? Not just for you, not just for you, but for everyone. Amen? <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys a small analogy. Let's say right here I have, let's say right here I have a, let's say a $100 bill. Let's say I have a $100 bill and it's worth a lot, right? Its value would be a lot to anyone. Its value would be a lot. It's a $100 bill. It's worth a lot. Let's say I, what, I crumble it up. Its value would still be the same. There's a bunch of $100 bills that are crumbled up. Its value always stays the same, right? But let's say I drop it on the floor and I step on it. And I pick it up. Its value would still be the same, right? Value never changes. That's how God sees us. I mean, I don't want to say we're a $100 bill, but even though... We may be crumbled up, even though we may be stepped on, even though we may be going through the worst times in our life. God sees, God still sees our, or sees our value in us. We are a great value in front of the presence of the Lord. Amen? Our value never change, changes in front of the presence of the Lord. Amen? Our value never changes no matter what we go through, no matter what happens. God still loves us because we're special in front of his presence. Amen? We never change. Even though we go through the worst times, even though we, we go back outside in the world, we do terrible things, God's still there with his arms open to accept us. Amen? Just think about where we would be without him. It's terrible. I mean, like, people, I know people that have gone outside, done terrible things, and God yet still, he's there to accept them. And look at the, where, where they're now. They're doing great things in front of the presence of the Lord. Amen? If you guys open uh, your Bible, there's in Psalms 139.16, it reads, Your eyes saw my informed body. All the days ordained me for, were, for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I'm going to repeat it. Your eyes saw my informed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. In other words, God knew who we were from the beginning of he created us. So in other words, God knew what, where, where we would be from the beginning of creation. So when God formed you in your mother's stomach, in your mother's womb, God knew where would we be today. I'm telling you, we're not here just to sit down, just to be here for a reason. I know I, I, every time I come in here, I feel like I'm always saying this, but I know God maybe is telling, me, telling the church and telling me something, that we're not just here for no reason. There's 80 people in any 80 or more youth in this church. I don't think God would do that for no reason. I mean, God has something special to bring so many youth in this church. 80 youth. Look at where we are right now. We have an English service every Sunday. We didn't have that a year ago. We're growing, we're growing, growing, and growing. God is multiplying this church immensely. Who knows where we would be in the, in the future right now? God is working with us immensely. Amen. If you go to Philippians 1.16, it says, The latter do so of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. So in other words, us that are here in church, it says, The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. Latter means towards the end. Like towards the end when the, when the coming of the Lord is near. Meaning, the, Lord, the coming of the Lord is very near. You can see everything that is it's occurring. There's wars occurring around the world. There's hunger. There's deaths. All these things that are occurring. And this is our time to be even stronger, to even become stronger, to go out there in the world and preach. We can't be here hiding from, from people and talking about them. We have to be out there preaching to friends, preaching to people that work, we work with, people that... People that we know, we can't just be quiet and you have to spread the word of the spread the word of the Lord because 
God wants us to do that. It says in Mark 16, 15, go outside and preach the word of the Lord. Amen? That's what it says in Mark. Let's open the Bible right here in Mark 16, 15. I'm sorry, brothers. I'm, I'm a little sick, so. So it says, uh, 1615, it says, He said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Meaning, we have to preach to all creation. Not just, and not just the people here around us, not just our friends. All New York City, all my hand. As I said before, there's 80 youth in this church. We must know more than 80 people. If each of our friends, we know somebody, why not bring them to the service? Amen? We, look at how many, how many youth are here in this church. If we at least tell one person that we know, this church can have about 160, 160 people in this church in the service right now. Amen? So we have to go out there and tell a friend and bring him right here. Amen? I don't know, bro. I don't know, brother. I don't know if you're feeling it, but I know God is speaking to us today. Amen? I don't know, but I know God is speaking to us today. Amen? And I want to tell your brother that's here today, that's been coming lately, that's been coming a few days now. God doesn't just use, God just doesn't just use this person. God uses everybody. God doesn't make exception of any person. Look at how God used David. God, David was a person that, you know, he was the young one. He was the littlest one. And when, and when God told the prophet at that time to go and look for, look for the new king of Israel, he went out, and he, he, he was looking out for the strongest person, the strongest brother, the tallest one. But yet God knew he had something special with the smallest one that was over there herding the sheep. And man, God uses the smallest one. God doesn't, God, cannot, God doesn't make exception of any person. It's like, let me give you another analogy. Now, a lot of women, or it doesn't matter, it could be a woman or a guy, when they go to a pawn shop or when they go to a jewelry, jewelry store, they usually go buy a ring, and when they look at a ring, they usually um, look for uh, the size of the ring. They usually for, look for the color of the ring. They usually look for the shape, its value, how much it's worth, and all that. But let me tell you something. God does not look at none of that. And, man, God just sees what's in your heart. And, man, he doesn't look at the shape. He doesn't look at the size. He doesn't look at what you can give, what, what you have done in the past. God just sees what's in your heart. Amen? Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> God looks at if your heart is, is open to accept him and to be used. God has great things for you. He, has, he wants to use it in his perfect plan. How it said in the beginning of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you. Amen? God knows the plan he has for you. Amen? I don't know, brother, but God knows the plan he has for you. He does not make exception. Amen? He chooses, he can use anybody, amen. Uh, amen. Can I get another holly? Can I get a clap for the presence of the Lord? Are you guys open to Acts 10.34? It reads, then Peter began to speak. I know I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. I'm gonna read it one more time. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. As I said before, God does not show favoritism to anybody. It doesn't matter where you come from, what you've done, where you've been in the past. God doesn't care. God just cares if you open your heart and accept him 
and are willing and is and you're willing to follow his path and follow his plan. Amen. I don't know, brother, but we all have we all may have our own plans. We we may you know we we may might we we may want to do this. We we may want to do that, but only God knows what his our true plan is. Amen. Only God knows where we'll be tomorrow. Who knows? God maybe has maybe maybe has something else for me. Maybe he has something for you. I, for one, you know, I want to do something. I'm in college and I want, I'm following something to do in science. And I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what God has in plan for me. I mean, I might be doing something in science, but who knows what God has for me in the future? So I'm taking it step by step because I know how God is going to be working with me, and God is going to be working His perfect plan, not just with me though, but with you, with you, with you, and you, brother and sister. I don't know, but can you praise the Lord one more time? Amen. That's how I read it right here. God does not show favoritism. Another example is how God and his disciples. God did not just use anybody. God used even God even used fishermen. Fishermen in the, in the Bible. He used Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. All of those five and six, they were they were all fishermen. That's not at that time that was that was like one of the worst jobs. That was just like to gain money over there. They were, the good jobs were like being taxpayers and lawyers at that time. And at, the, at that time, these men were fishermen. And God yet still used them. He saw something great in those men. He saw something great in those men. Amen? Right here, we may, we, we, most of us were here, we're Hispanics. I mean, we're not really, we're not, we're not Caucasians. We're not white men out there. But God is using us, the Hispanics, to be something great out there in the world. Amen? God is using us. You, you, perhaps you, you're not, you, perhaps you think you're not, you're nothing right now. Perhaps you think you're, <coughs> perhaps you think you're worth nothing right now. Perhaps you thought, oh, what is God going to see in me? What is, why is God going to use me? <coughs> uh, can you praise the Lord? I don't know, brother, but you perhaps thought, that God cannot use you. I know a lot of brothers that, that have thought that in the past. I know a lot. Perhaps they thought, hey, I don't know, I, I'm, I was doing this before in the past. Why would God use me? But look at how God used these, these five men, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, to do great things in front of his presence. These men were nothing. These men were fishermen. Yet they followed God with all their heart, and look at what they did. They went outside and preached the word of God in every corner of the world. Amen? <laughs> I don't know, man. I see Josue. I see David. I see, I see Junior. I see Radimir. I see Lysides. I see all these young, I see all these young people. And what, what is it to say that God cannot use them as well? Amen? What does it say that God cannot use them as well? Amen? I see great things in this church. I see great things in front of these young men, in front of these young women. I said before, they can be missionaries, they can be musicians. They can do great things in front of their presence if only they open their hearts. Amen? Can you guys open your Bibles in Ezekiel 36, reads <coughs> I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you I will remove you from your from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws Brother, brother and sister, if you're not received God, this is what God is trying to speak to you. Amen? God was trying to tell you to open your heart and accept him inside your life. God doesn't, matter, God doesn't care about what you did in the past. God doesn't care about what, what, what you've done in the past. God doesn't care about what you've done, where you've been. God just telling you to open your heart and he will clean you. Amen? God will clean you. He's done great things in front of this church. He's done great things in front of men. There's past alcoholics, past drug addicts, 
past people that have done terrible things, but yet God has helped them. God has cleaned them. God has touched their heart. God has used them, and God will still use them. Amen? <laughs> God is just telling you to accept them. He will clean you. He will put his Holy Spirit inside you, and he will use you. Amen? God will use you. All he wants to do is he wants to change you, to mold you. He wants to mold you as a vase, make you as, as, as his image. Amen? God, I don't know, brother, but... <clears throat> Over there in college, I see a lot of a lot of young men, a lot of young women wasting their time, wasting their lives. For what though? I mean, I don't know, man. I don't, I, 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 I speak to them, but they, yet they don't listen. They respect that I'm a Christian, but they don't they don't. I don't know how to speak to them because they waste their whole time and and, and going to parties and, and drinking and, and doing all these terrible things. Yet. Where will they be in a, in, in, in a few years? Where will they be now? Where, where will they be in a couple of years? All that happiness that they see right now, it's, it's, a, momentary, it's, it's a momentary happiness. But here, here being in church, we know it's, it's the greatest happiness in the world. Because we know we're going to be in a great place over there in a few years. We're going to be with the Heavenly Father. Amen? <coughs> Brother... When God changes us, when God uses us, when he puts his spirit in within us, other people begins to see the change in us. Amen? There's a lot of ways to evangelize and to preach to other people. Whether it's going outside and giving out tracts, whether it's preaching, whether it's singing. But another way is by giving a good, good testimony. Giving your testimony to another person, that can influence that person to be a new person and change. Amen? In Acts 4.13, it reads, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were uns unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took, note, they took note that these men had been with Jesus. When other people begin to see you, when you, once you accept God and you have him in your life, other people begin to ask, why is this guy always happy? Why is this guy, why is everything going good for him? Why is this, why is this happening for this guy? They want to know more. I mean, my, my friends, they, they, they sometimes ask me this, but they still don't want to go to church. They're still in their things, but... They're beginning to listen, but it's not the same. They asked me, <laughs> they asked me one time why I always go to church every Sunday. Because I go to church over there in college every Sunday. And they asked me why do I go to church every Sunday. And I told them because <clears throat> I'm a Christian and that's the right thing to do. I gotta worship the Lord. I gotta, I gotta be in his presence. And they told and, and I'm like, I'm like, I gotta go praise the Lord. I'm gonna be in his presence. And then my friends are like, Hey man, do your thing. Do your thing. I mean, I'm not I'm not going, but I mean like every day they ask me the same thing and I mean somehow I speak to them and tell them that God that God has great God wants to use them. God has to change them that everything they're doing it's not the right thing. And I know day by day each day I keep telling them this and they keep seeing me going to church and doing good things, and not going to going to parties, not drinking and sometimes they they actually they actually last night caught me reading the Bible and I thought it was kind of funny. They started laughing, but just by seeing this, I know I'm giving them a good testimony. I know by, by doing this, they're going to change. They're going to change somehow. Not today, not maybe tomorrow, but in the future. I know that's going to happen. <laughs> and you, brother, by accepting God, by having the Spirit inside you, I know if you go to work one day and just say one thing, God bless you, this and that, I know, you, I know your friend, he's going to see a difference inside you. I promise you that. If you accept God, I know he's gonna, your friends and your family members, they're going to see a difference in you. I can assure you that. They're going to see a huge difference in you. As I said before, he does not show favoritism to nobody. Another example is Paul. Paul before, well, his name was Saul. But Saul was a terrible man before. He would, he would go out, and, and, <coughs> go out and, and, and kill a lot of Christians at that time. He would go out and, and look for them, go, go into town and town and, and persecute them. But God, even though he was doing this, God had something special for him. God wanted to use him in his plan, even though everything he had done in the past, he didn't care about what he did in the past. 
all right, he did this and that, but God had something special for him. And I don't know, brother, as I said before, I don't know what you did in the past. I don't know what you did yesterday. I don't know what you did the day before yesterday, but I know God has something special for you. Amen? I know how God has something has special for you. He wants to use you in his plan. Amen? Brother and sister, I want you guys to get up. I want you guys to get up right now. I don't know, brothers, <coughs> but God wants to use us, amen? We just have to open our hearts and be willing to stay in his plan, amen? We have to open our hearts and follow his path, amen? His plan is perfect. His plan, his plan is precise, amen? I don't know, brothers, if, if, if you feel it and if you understand, but God wants to use us immensely. I mean... I think about how, like, a year ago, I, I don't know, I, I, I just keep thinking about this, but a year ago, we did not have this service here today. We have an English service. I mean, I don't know how great is that. How great is that? I mean, what's the next step? If God is using me here, what's to say he cannot use you or you or you to preach here today? God doesn't just use any, God doesn't, can use anybody. God can use this brother, the brother over there. It doesn't matter. You just got to open your heart and accept him. <coughs> Brothers, I want you guys to come in front. Whoever wants to accept God, whoever, whoever needs God, whoever wants to be used by God tonight. <coughs> I want you to speak to him today. I want you to talk to him. Oh, presence of the Lord. I know he wants to use us very much. I know what we've done in the past. Perhaps we've, we've sinned. But the Lord died on the cross for each and every one of us. He sacrificed it all just for you and me. Amen. God has great plans for us, brothers and sisters. I don't know. I don't know what he has for me tomorrow. But I know if I keep following in this path, God will use you. Just open your heart, brother. Open your heart today, my Lord. Oh, Lord, touch these young men, Jesus Christ. Use us, Jesus. Help us, mold us to your image, my Lord. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ. We want to be used by you, Jesus. Oh, the Lord's, per the Lord's path is perfect. His plan is perfect. His plan is perfect. We just got to accept them. Change those hearts. Change those hearts from, from stone. We just got to accept them. Leave a room from the Lord. Let His Spirit come in within us. Let us be light to everyone we speak to. Oh, let us be a good testimony to everyone we speak to. <coughs> I don't know. I can feel the presence of the Lord today. Oh, let God use us. Let God use us today. Oh, let God use us in his plan. His plan is perfect and precise. Oh, let us be a, a Paul. Oh, let us be your disciples, my Lord. Oh, Jesus Christ, help us. Help us be a great prophet. Help us be great people, Jesus Christ, in front of your presence. We want to be a change in, your, in, in this world, my Lord. Help this youth. Help JPM in this church, Jesus. Oh, you will continue to multiply each and every one of us immensely. <coughs> oh, Jesus, help us, my Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. For him be the glory. To him be the honor. Glory to God. Oh, brother and sister, give him. Oh, give him your praise. Glory to God. Jesus, I love
transformed you he took you from the bottom oh he took you from the trash and lifted you up to be a new person oh give him the honor it's Jesus Christ who died for you give him the honor tonight give him the honor tonight What would it be if it wasn't for Him? Where would we be if it wasn't for His presence? Where would we be if it wasn't for Him? If it wasn't for His mercy? If it wasn't for His grace? Where would we be right now? Oh, where would we be if He wasn't even died for us on the cross? Where? Have you thought of that, brother or sister? Have you thought of that? Where would we be right now? Hallelujah. Oh, give Him the honor. Give Him the praise tonight. Give Him the honor. Give Him the praise tonight. 
claims is the Almighty. He is the one. Hallelujah. Because he, must, he reserves it. He all glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a message that God has given to us tonight. Amen. What a message that God has given us tonight. He can use anybody. Hallelujah. He can use anybody in this place. You just have to put your life Oh, just give your life to Jesus Christ, and He's going to use it. Hallelujah! We're gonna we're gonna pray so that uh, to conclude uh, the service. Hallelujah! I'm not gonna pray. Everybody's gonna pray. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Glory to God.